Recall in one of the placing toothpick tasks, our first task showed three figures being created, the first figure having four toothpicks, the second having eight, and the third having 12, and carrying on in a similar fashion. When we look at what this looks like as a graph, we can see that at figure zero, there are zero toothpicks. At the first figure, the one that we could actually see on the screen, there were four toothpicks. The second figure had eight toothpicks, and so on. Most students told me that they knew that every figure number had four more toothpicks than the last. Well, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about what that means to see that the number of toothpicks is increasing by four with every increasing figure number. And what we call that is the rate of change. And today what we're going to do is look at the rate of change and we're going to determine how we can figure out the rate of change when we're given a graph. So how we do this is with a method called rise over run. What we do is we try to figure out how much the y values are increasing by and how much the x values are increasing by. So some people would write it as a fraction, rise over run. So let's take a look at our uh, examples here. Here's an example. We have a pattern that begins at 3 and we can see the next uh, the next point is 1 comma 5 then we have 2 comma 7 and 3 comma 9. Well in order to do the rate of change while these are friendly numbers you might be able to see that we're actually increasing by 2 each time. What we need to do is when the numbers get more difficult what we're going to do is we're going to use the rise over run method. So we're going to select any two points on the line. In this case, if we find the rise, we're going to rise up from one of the points. Typically we pick the point uh, furthest to the left or the, the, the point with the lowest x value. So we're going to rise up from that point and we'll see that we're rising a total of four units and we're going to run a total of two units over to the next point. So the idea is to start on a point to rise and run over back to the line. And with this run equaling two or having a value of two, we can then put it in our formula, rise over run, and we see that the change in y is four, the change in x is two, and we have a rate of change of two. Notice that we can pick any point on this line and rise over run will still work. So I could rise up from 3 all the way to 9, and I get a rise of 6, and then I'll now be running by 3. So this is actually proportional, just like we saw in last unit. So this is a proportion that will always work for us with any linear relationship. So let's, uh, let's learn a little bit about what the equation would be for this particular example here. Uh, remembering that our initial value was starting at 3, and our rate of change, when we did rise over run, we had 2 over 1. What we can do is then sub this into our formula for a linear equation. So if I want to find the value of y, what we can do is start at 3 and add 2 x times. So if I want to find the value when x, uh, the value of y when x is 10, I would sub in 10 for x. I get 2 times 10, which is 20, and I add the initial value of 3, so that would be 23. Note that we could begin the equation with 2x and then add 3 afterwards, since 2x plus 3 or 3 plus 2x are equal. Let's take a look at another example. Here we have a linear relationship um, with the initial value, the starting value being 7 on the y-axis. So here the pattern begins at 7, and it looks like it's a decreasing pattern, so it's going to go down. And if we look at the rate of change, the rise is negative 1, and the run is 2. So our rate of change would be negative 1 over 2, or negative 0.5. And with our equation, that means we can find a value of y, and that is equal to the initial value of 7, 
and we're going to take away 0.5x times. So if I want to find the value of y when x is equal to 4, I'm going to start at 7, and I'm going to take away 0.5 four times. So I would take away 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So that would be taking away a total of 2, and we would be left with 5, just like we can see on the graph. So we're going to have you try some problems at where we're going to have you find the rate of change, which remember, the rate of change is just how much the linear relationship is going up by or down by each time. And we're going to try to challenge you to determine the initial value and create some equations over the next few days.